Hollywood is changing. 2023 is really shaping up to be one of the most formative years in the entire history of the industry. After what seems like an eternity of the box office being dominated by action blockbusters, superhero films, not to mention the countless reboots and remakes being spewed out every few months, not to mention the rise of streaming services and TV getting bigger budgets and rivaling that of what we see on the big screen, the inevitable point that we're at right now was obvious. There was going to be a massive shift. But to the degree of what we're seeing this year alone, it's kind of of crazy. There has been a lot of videos this summer alone talking about how all of these different movies are bombing, what's going on? And that's very true, a lot of movies are bombing. Now movies bombing at the box office are nothing new, or at least big tentpole movies with large budgets are of course nothing new. We've talked about a few box office bombs on this channel before that maybe shouldn't have been that were of bigger affair, but like I mentioned, the age of cinema that we've been living in for a while has been dominated by, well, just say what it is, Disney, Marvel, Star Wars. Not to say that I personally haven't enjoyed some of this stuff. I enjoyed a lot of Disney's original work that they were putting out. I enjoyed Tangle, Zootopia, Wreck-It Ralph, more of their modern films produced under this modern Disney banner that I personally still enjoyed. And ignoring the fatigue and decline in quality over the past three years, what Marvel was able to do from 2008 and up until 2019 was incredibly special. Not to say that every film in there is a gold mine and peak cinema. In fact, I kind of resent what Marvel has turned cinema into, I still do have a form of respect for it, and I enjoyed a lot of what that was. That's not even including their Star Wars and Pixar products, which were also incredibly successful. They really dominated the past 10 years, you can really see that reflected on a bunch of other studios. Everybody trying to hustle into cinematic universe to kind of replicate Marvel, which of course DC being one of the biggest culprits. You of course have the infamous Dark Universe that Universal tried to start up, which went amazing for them. Another big boom boom action blockbuster franchise is having a big go at the box office, like the Transformers movies from Paramount, those did incredibly well for them for a while. Universal's Fast and Furious franchise was something that actually worked for them, made a lot of money, has been very long running. I think you're picking up on the theme here, and I think a lot of you guys already knew this before even listening to me say that. Point is, the change of the decade really changed everything. It wasn't just that the decade was changing, so therefore audiences and our minds are going to shift to have this completely different mindset. No, something very big happened in the world that we just can't overlook, that literally affected the production of cinema, the way we consume it, and at that time, in 2020, 2021, it was really scary. Theaters were not open, people were not going to the theaters. Studios were dumping their intended theatrically released films onto VOD only like a few weeks after they were in theaters. Heck, Wonder Brothers had the genius idea of having a day and day release of theatrically released movies coming out on HBO Max the very same day, which might be one of the biggest bonehead moves I've ever seen in Hollywood history. Wonder why Wonder brothers got shipped off to Discovery and they're in the situation they're in right now, that could very well be why. Is cinema dead? Are the theaters going away? What is going to happen? Well, thankfully, things did start to change, but before we get to 2023, we have to look back at 2022. The two most important films of last year, in my opinion, at least when it comes to box office, I'm not saying these are my favorite films of last year by no stretch of the imagination, but films like Avatar The Way of Water and Top Gun Maverick gave a very clear indication on where audiences were heading, because in the very same year we also received movies like Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness, Thor Love and Thunder, and Black Panther Wakanda Forever. All of those are the standard Marvel affair, but I feel like I should mention those films because they are the examples of what has dominated cinema for so long, just that one studio alone. None of those movies crossed a billion dollars at the box office, but the other ones did. Not to say that if your movie doesn't make a billion dollars, it's a flop, because that simply isn't true. A lot of this depends on the budget of the movie, the marketing of the movie, what's this movie intended for, who's the audience? I wasn't expecting films like The Fable or Tar to really make a splash at the box office. I don't think anybody really was. And while Top Gun Maverick and Avatar The Way of Water are big action blockbuster movies, they're very different from the ones we've seen in years past. That being... They're really good. You can feel the passion ooze out of the screen in Top Gun Maverick, really seeing Tom Cruise's soul put into every scene here. The practical effects, the cinematography, all of it is really great. Top Gun is even like one of those classic films. Yeah, it has like a cult following. And when this movie was announced, I thought it was just another pointless remake of an old film from 30, 40 years ago that we really didn't need, but I think we really needed a movie like this actually. And I think Avatar The Way of Water speaks for itself. It's 
visually stunning, it's gorgeous, the amount of passion that James Cameron clearly has for this series is immense, and it feels like a movie that has been worked on for as long as it's been worked on. And I'm sure Disney is ecstatic that they were able to acquire this franchise in their pickup of Fox. Yeah, just in case you guys forgot, um, Avatar is a Disney franchise. Even before all these 2023 movies we're about to get to, I thought this was incredibly interesting. Are these three Marvel films here bombs? No, they didn't do as amazing as some of their counterparts, and I think the burnout was inevitable after Endgame. But the biggest takeaway I saw was that these two films that are big action tentpoles was able to outgross and have more staying power than what has been the action tentpole for a long time now, simply by being well-crafted, heart-filled movies that impacted or touched the audience in a way to where they wanted to go see it again or tell a friend to go see it or go see it with their friend another time. There's nothing really emotionally resonant about this or this. This was clearly an event type movie for Marvel right here, but I don't think it worked necessarily because it was kind of forced. Look at all of these characters, you're about to see a real big cameo fest, who was excited for Professor X? Okay, but you know a movie that's the complete opposite of Doctor Strange and the Multiverse of Madness that was able to build an online hype campaign by not really even doing that much, just by some good marketing and having the right kind of stuff behind it. That's right, look, I'm not calling Minions The Rise of Gru high art or anything, the movie's fine. And while there's always been online marketing campaigns and fan-grown stuff like that, this was really the first time we were able to do this post-pandemic, and also the first time this was really gonna happen with a movie in the TikTok era. No matter what you may think of the app or the people on it, I'm doing glizzy overtime. <sighs> you are able to be completely and unapologetically yourself completely stupid and ridiculous. And as a society, that is just simply who we are, me included. And all of these pieces from all of these incredibly popular movies would lead us up into 2023, where we would see it all really come into form. Things really kicked off in March of this year with Shazam! Fury of the Gods and Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, two new superhero films from the two leading superhero studios, Marvel and DC. And well, Shazam! Fury of the Gods was a monstrous box office flop. I don't think this really shocked anybody. Shazam! was fine. It's a decent movie, but we really didn't need a sequel to it, and especially with people's perception of DC nowadays, and also this aforementioned changing movie landscape, I think this flop was inevitable, it didn't even seem like Warner Brothers had a lot of faith in this thing. And then you had Ant-Man and the Wasp Quantumania, the latest Marvel affair, remember, these guys are supposed to be the kings of things. Well, not anymore, because while the movie had a great start at the box office, having the best opening weekend out of any of the three Ant-Man movies, things came crashing down very quickly after negative word of mouth spread, doesn't help that the reviews to the this movie were terrible, being one of the few new Marvel movies to have a negative score on Rotten Tomatoes, the film's just not good. The movie didn't even crack $500 million, and it needed around $600 million to even break even. This movie was a bomb for Marvel. Now, this shouldn't be noted that this is some Marvel exclusive thing, or that everything they're going to produce now is just going to fall off a cliff, because only a few months later, Guardians of the Galaxy 3 would release, and it would do amazing at the box office. Well, why did this one do well, and this one didn't? Well, one of these movies, was made by an actual filmmaker with heart and soul and had a passion for this franchise and these characters that he's created. You can feel it ooze off the screen. It's incredibly heartfelt, well-directed, well-written, it's funny, entertaining, even soul-crushing at points. It's a real movie made by a real person, not a boardroom. Meanwhile, Ant-Man is studio-mandated fodder. This movie's just straight-up garbage. I'm sorry. I've seen a lot of Marvel fans try to find redeeming qualities in this thing. I can't find anything. This movie's an embarrassment. It's bad. It's not good. That's why people didn't go to watch it. This isn't a people are getting sick of Marvel thing because we have our example right here before our eyes. People clearly will still go watch a Marvel movie. It's a good movie versus a bad movie thing. Audiences are done showing up to a movie just because there's a superhero in it. You can't just make a movie, slap a cape on the actor, and expect people to show up. They'll show up but you gotta make the movie good. Heck, look at Across the Spider-Verse, that's probably the most superhero-y movie we've received in a very long time. And that movie is unspeakably good. This is an animated movie, not even the main character being Peter Parker, the traditional Spider-Man that audiences know, that people showed up to has made over $600 million at the box office, and you wanna know why? Cause it's a really, really good movie, people heard it was really good, and they showed up to the theater. I could go on and on about all of the different examples of this in 2023, whether it's Transformers, Rise of the Beast, Fast X, or the biggest offender of this year, The Flash, while people might not be entirely done with this 
We're getting there. People are getting sick of the studio mandated action blockbuster that's just shoved out to get another sequel in audiences mouths. Open will suck it dry because there's big boom boom action going on on the screen now. In only the few years we had isolated in our homes, scrolling on our phones all day, it did a lot of bad, but I think it did a lot of good things too. I think we became a little more real. I'm not saying us as a society have collectively opened our third eye and we completely understand who we are as people, but I think we have a better understanding of who we are. We saw a lot of bad stuff go down in the early parts of the decade. A lot of political stuff, frankly. And while there was a lot of corny stuff and garbage in there, there was a lot of good as well. People got a little more creative and regardless of what you may think of that aforementioned TikTok app, it let the more average everyday person use their imagination a little more and that's always great. And Filmmaking is nothing but imagination. I think more now than ever, we can sense genuine passion and creativity, and just as equally, we can sense when something is disingenuous, heartless, soulless. And we also have Google to check. But two things that we sensed were real and genuine and had heart and soul behind them was Barbie and Oppenheimer. Christopher Nolan, one of our greatest living directors who's delivered us nothing but amazing films over his entire filmography, just released his latest film, a three-hour R-rated historical drama about the creation of the atomic bomb and the complicated man behind it, and the film is projected to be close to a billion dollars by the end of its run. That is insane. And then Greta Gerwig, one of the newer directors in Hollywood who's produced nothing but amazing films herself, just released her latest film, Barbie, and she's the first solo female director in history to have a billion dollar movie. Oh yeah, and it's also the biggest film of the year. How did this happen? How did a movie about Oppenheimer and a movie about Barbie become the biggest movies of the year? Well, it's quite simple. These are the films that have been made with nothing but heart, love, and passion. From the screenplay, to the direction, to the performances from their leads. These movies ooze everything that they are, everything that Hollywood and filmmaking should be. Two auteur filmmakers making their passion projects, and it is so evident in everything you see. Them releasing the same day, the grassroots campaign you saw online, and most importantly the film itself led to it being one of the biggest days in Hollywood history, and I couldn't be happier. I love both of these films so much, they're probably my favorites of the year. This is important, and it shows an important lesson to Hollywood, that when you let filmmakers make their art, and genuinely try to promote it and give it a chance, it'll pay off. Hollywood is changing because the audience is changing. We saw these two movies from these two directors, saw the heart and passion behind it, and decided to get behind the movies ourselves and support them and market them on our social medias. More importantly, we showed up to the theaters. And then we showed up again because the movie was so good. I've seen these movies multiple times, both of them. Barbie a little more than I'd like to publicly admit, but this outpour of love and overwhelming success of both of these films has bled over into the general audience. Everybody's going to see these things. They're good movies, and we saw that these were going to be good movies. We can see behind the thick plastic seal on a lot of these things now. Like, am I really gonna go watch the Marvels? Do I actually want to trade a beach day with my friends for a two hour screening of Blue Beetle. I don't know, man. I think that's what's going through a lot of people's heads. I know for a fact that a lot of studios are going to try to replicate this in some way, not by actually making good movies with good filmmakers, but the day and day release things of having things be polar opposites. We're already seeing this with Saw Patrol. I don't even know how to respond to this. Completely missing the mark here. People didn't show up to Barbie and Oppenheimer because they're so different. I mean, it definitely plays a role into the meme aspect of things. Yeah, they're very different movies, but they're very similar in what I've explained. Two auteur filmmakers making their passion projects and being able to feel that in every single frame. At the end of the day, will this save Hollywood? I don't know, it's really hard to tell. We're in the middle of the SAG and WGA strike right now, which is also something that will be incredibly transformative for the industry. It's incredibly important for these artists and filmmakers, writers, actors, who collectively create these pieces of art to be owed what they deserve. What they're doing is more important than just seeking better wages, they're also calling out the corporate greed of Hollywood. The very thing that these box office bombs were created out of. Corporate greed. Maybe this will lead to stuff more human, more personal. Stuff that us, as humans, gravitate to. Hollywood isn't changed because of Barbenheimer just yet. However, it's a massive step forward 
forward in artistry, creativity, and the Hollywood system. There's a lot of work to do, and I'm not saying by any means that this is the death of the Hollywood blockbuster. 2022, last year, showed that that's very much something that is still alive if you do it right. But what made those movies so successful in the same way that Oppenheimer and Barbie have been so successful is what makes movies so special all along. Heart, creativity, passion. And maybe with just a little more of that, Hollywood will continue to change into something a bit brighter. Could you 